Hi everybody, I'm Yair from Rain the Dog and you are watching the follow-up video to our page object model video. Here you will study some more advanced stuff about page factory. So today in this short video you will study about Ajax element locator factory, how to cache a web element and we'll see some examples as well. The Ajax element locator is a lazy load concept in page factory pattern to identify web elements only when they are used in any operation. Meaning that it can serve as a method to wait for elements that might appear lately in our web page. You probably all know that sometimes we have elements that are being loaded only after we perform a certain action or maybe they are loading a little bit slowly than the others. We can use this uh, adject element locator easily in order to do that. Let's start by a short example. If you all watch the page object model lecture, you've probably seen that we've put a placeholder to the sign in page of Gmail. We already inserted the identifier ID uh, of the username and the next button. If you haven't seen it, please click on the link that you just see appearing on the screen and then you can see how we implemented all of these. Now let's start with writing our test using the sign in page. We want to sign in to Gmail. So we'll start by creating a new test. We'll call it valid Gmail login. Since the sign-in page extends our base page, we can provide it the web driver and then we can use the method for our, from our base page to navigate. We'll navigate to gmail.com and we're going to insert the username and click the next button that we identified in the page object model lecture. So let's start by sign in page, insert username. Let's say that my username, I've already created an inbox for this. And let's click the button. Let's run this test and let's see what happens. Okay, we have a failure here. We have a null pointer exception. And th this is because we haven't initialized the web elements. So here we need to specify in our constructor, page object factory, init elements with our web driver and the instance of this class. Let's rerun it. So here we have reached the password page. In Hebrew, by the way, it's written here, what is your password? Now we need to identify this field. Let's say that we are on the same page, but the password field was all only loaded after we click the next button. So you can see here we have the name equals password. We can identify the elements. Let's go back to our sign in page. We'll find by name equals password and we'll call it password field. Now we'll create a very similar method. I can just copy that and we'll call it insert password.
and here we'll call password field send keys password of course it should be web element now we can call this method right after we click the next button let's say my password is one two three four test let's run it okay our test was failed and it was failed because there wasn't an element after we click the next button the password field wasn't even loaded so the element wasn't loaded and we try to refer to it let's change a small thing in our constructor instead of initializing it that way we can say new ajax element, element locator factory and here we'll specify the driver and we should give a timeout let's say we are not willing to wait more than 10 seconds for this element to load let's rerun it now our test was still failed but the element uh, was identified because we didn't get the same error before the element wasn't even existed so probably the page was not fully loaded and the element wasn't interactable yet so what can we do in order to do that we can alter a bit the insert password because we know it might bump into a problem so let's grab this exception we'll do try and catch we'll catch this exception and because we know it might take some time so here if it won't work maybe we, sh we would wait a second let's say we'll wait only one second of course we need to surround it with try catch we have this hard-coded slip it's not the best practice because we can write a different method that I can give you an idea how to do it but let's start with this one to, just to see if it's working so let's say we get this exception because the element is not interactable we'll wait a second and then we'll try to press it again if it will work we'll transfer it to a different method that can save us a bit more time and as you can see the password was inserted here so how can we prevent this hard wait and also it might take more than one second we can externalize all of this to a, uh, to a different method and the best uh, way to externalize it it's to our base page so let's go to our base page and we can create a method that we'll call public void or boolean maybe click until interactable we'll have the web element and we'll have timeout here we'll copy this and this will be the element oh we are trying to send keys so we'll say insert 
know what let's try to click on it why not okay so we'll click on it we'll get the error of element is not interactable but instead of this we'll just put everything in a loop so we'll do the same as we did here we'll do it with the, our start time it's very similar to the wait method that you've seen in the previous lecture on the page object model and you can also check out our wait for element lecture you also study there so we we'll have the time uh, start time we have the timeout in second and let's start a boolean variable let's call it success and it will be false so while not success and there is no timeout we should try to click on it we should catch the element and let's say that we are going to sleep for a short period of time maybe 50 milliseconds before trying to click again so we don't need this one and so we have the try and the catch if this one was successful we can say that the success is going to be true so we'll break out of the loop and in the end let's return the success value now this method should work properly still have an error maybe we need another one no this is for the try okay and the catch and we need one here I think that's enough okay so let's try and use this method instead of all of these because it's coming from its parent we'll call it by super click until interactable password field and let's say that we are not willing to wait no more than 10 seconds now this value will return a boolean value Th this method will return a boolean value and if it's true if result then we can tell the password field to send keys and we call it password one two three But of course we can change this one to be a boolean as well and to return the result okay now let's try to run it and to see if everything is working properly and as you can see everything was working and we haven't used hard-coded wait In order to cache element and prevent it from calling several times over and over again, we can use the annotation cache lookup. By the way, you should be very careful since web elements are dynamic. So if you are not sure that this element is going to be always in the background, you should prevent using that. Let's see a short example. Let me demonstrate the flow. If we navigate to this page, we can click on this banner and we can close the tab and we can click on it and we can close the tab and over and over again. Every time we'll go back to this web page, it will be the same element. So I've already created the page object for this one. Let's just have a look. Whenever we click on this right banner, you can see here that I've added the cache lookup annotation to it. So whenever I click on it, it will be the same web element and we won't need to reload it again. So let's run the test. I'll debug it just for you to understand. By the way, if you don't know about the page loading strategy and about slow pages, I encourage you to have a look in our endless loading page lecture that you can 
find the link down below. And also, if you don't know how to switch between tabs, we have another lecture that is specifically demonstrating how to switch between tabs, and you should check it out as well. So first, we'll start by navigating to this web page. So let's right-click on it, and let's debug this test. As you can see, this page is very slow. Now we are getting the element that we want. And we are clicking on it. Then the tab is being opened. Then we close this tab. We switch to this tab. Then we close it. Then we are uh, switching back to our tab. Then we still click on the same banner. It's already in our cache. We don't need to reload it and then we switch back and we close. So the outcome of the test is this one. It's very simple, sometimes it's useful, but you should be careful when using, uh, when caching an element because uh, it might hinder you. Sometimes an element is dynamic. When we go back, it might change to another element. Something else might be loaded. So you should always pay attention to that. That will be all for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope you found this lecture useful. Please check out our channel. If you haven't subscribed to it yet, please do it now. Also, share your thoughts. You can comment in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Until next time, have a good one.